Hello again everyone from Tokyo, Japan and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera where today's video is going to be about a really unique and interesting uh, camera. I know I say that pretty much about every camera I do a video about and I also say that that especially applies to this camera. So we'll just say that I, today I'm doing a, another camera video and keep it simple like that I guess. Uh, the subject of today's video is going to be the Canon T90 uh, SLR camera known to some people as the tank. Uh, for those of you who are new to my channel, I sell vintage Japanese cameras in my online store, japanvintagecamera.com. I have an Etsy store which is also called Japan Vintage Camera, so if you'd like to buy this Canon or another vintage Japanese camera, please visit one of my stores. I'll post links to my stores in the description below the video. So the Canon T90 was introduced in 1986 and it was the last uh, SLR camera made in the popular Canon FD mount, which had been introduced about 15 years before. Uh, the Canon T90 featured pretty much uh, every, uh, I guess, technological innovation which was available in 1986 with the exception of autofocus. Uh, the T90 is, it, it's, I don't know, it's maybe kind of like a love it or hate it camera. If you're like a, a classic film camera aficionado, this may not be your cup of tea, but if you are someone who... Uh, uh, is familiar with the, the later uh, DSLR cameras or such and are looking for something similar in the film format but uh, with say the manual focus FD mount uh, the T90 might be very appealing to you. Uh, the T90, I, I really like this camera. Uh, I, I very seldom come across these because it's really hard to find these in any kind of decent condition. And as you can see, this one is in, in really quite good shape. Almost no marks, just some faint stuff here and there on it. And I usually have to, you know, uh, the ones I find have error messages or things like that. And when I got this one, it was completely dead, like a, you know, it was just a brick with a lens on it. And I just found that the uh, electrical contacts in the battery compartment were dirty. And after cleaning those and putting some new batteries in it, it fired right up and it works beautifully. Uh, the really cool thing about this camera that I like is that uh, I can use the Canon FD lenses, uh, which were made in a large variety of, of types and designs and focal lengths, from uh, big fisheye lenses to super telephotos to uh, a huge amount of zooms and things like that. And some of these were absolutely stellar lenses. They were really amazing performers and they're a really, really good value right now. You can get a, a very large box of, uh, full of FD lenses for less than the price of a really good uh, AF lens for uh, a modern DSLR camera. And a camera like this allows you to get the, really the most out of these old FD lenses. Uh, and for reasons I'll explain as we get into the video. Uh, I've, I've always been kind of a, a fan of the Olympus OM series because I kind of like the compact design and my favorite of the OM series is like either the OM4 or OM3 uh, mainly because of their uh, spot metering capability and also the ability for uh, uh, say uh, uh, dark or light objects. You can simply shoot at these things at the at the push of a button on the camera, and uh, it, it it makes it so much easier to uh, to get accurate say light metering in very difficult lighting situations, on sunny days where you have some people standing in shade and some people standing in the sunlight and things like that. It is very difficult for a lot of cameras to get a good exposure where you can see everything in such a situation, and the OM series uh, OM4 and OM3 uh, allowed me to do that. That. It also allows for shooting uh, black things with dark backgrounds or uh, you know, people uh, skiing in the snow and stuff like that and being able to see the snow as actual snow and not something gray in the back. But you know the, the Canon uh, really just I don't know if I, I can't say that they borrowed or stole this idea from Olympus and they put it into the T90. So not only do you have this uh, Olympus style a metering system put into a Canon camera, but you have it with this very inexpensive FD mount. And the Olympus lenses, the OM series lenses, especially the, the better lenses in, a, in the product lineup are uh, very expensive and some have become astronomically expensive. Uh, there aren't really any astronomically expensive lenses in the FD uh, lens lineup, so uh, you, you get the same technological features as the OM4 or OM3 and maybe a more ergonomic design and with the much less expensive Canon FD mount. Uh, but wait, there's more than that. Uh, the Canon T90 offers a 1 4,000th top, uh, 1 4,000th second top shutter speed, which gives you one more stop of speed than the OM series uh, made in those cameras, the OM4 and OM3. 
which makes it uh, possible to use as you know beautiful uh, FD mount 50 or 55 millimeter f1.2 lenses. I really love the fast lenses on the Olympus cameras, but the limitations of the shutter uh, kind of uh, forced me to use neutral density filters if I want to shoot the, the fast lenses wide open. Uh, in, in some situations, in some films, you'll need a neutral density film cam excuse me, filter on this camera as well. But uh, the extra stop of speed comes in handy and also good for you know uh, freezing motion and stuff like that. So. Uh, let's go ahead and get started with the features, functions, and controls, and all that stuff with the Canon T90. And starting at the top here, we have only one dial, this plastic dial on this side. There are no rewind buttons or mechanical anything on this camera. On the left side here, we start with this kind of like white stripe here. And this is a, a, a access for the light to come in and illuminate the, the camera settings, make it visible in the viewfinder. Uh, here we have the mode setting and this allows you to select the shooting modes and the Canon T90 features a large variety of shooting modes. We have bulb, we have uh, a couple of different program modes, uh, program modes for uh, uh, lockdown, unlocked lenses. We have shutter priority, aperture priority and of course the simple program mode which is my favorite uh, in this camera especially if I'm going to be using the spot meter uh, uh, function. On the bottom here we have the metering mode and this allows you to cha change the, the meter modes. Maybe you can see them changing there next to my fingers. I turn the dial. We have uh, the spot meter, uh, full frame or center weighted light metering modes. And yeah, I, I really love how that works. We also have the uh, ability to do multiple exposures by pushing both of these buttons here down at the same time. And you can either take a second uh, uh, multiple exposure or you can take a series of them. Uh, you know, you, the camera gives you a lot of options. On the other side here we have the LED readout which features the different, uh, uh, I guess, the. of course I just mentioned the light metering and uh, shutter modes. We have settings here for the different firing modes and on the bottom here we have the exposure compensation or, excuse me, uh, exposure compensation indicator and it gets, gives you plus or minus two stops of exposure compensation. On the bottom here we have the indicator for the self timer. So I'm going to go ahead and move to the right side of the camera because this will help me explain a little bit about how these work. The side here we have a few different switches hidden under this cover and on, on the top one it's marked finder and we have kind of like a a three-way switch here where you can turn off the LED readout on the inside. You can turn it on or there's a backlight system which allows you to see it more clearly when it's dark out. Uh, we have a battery check light to let you check the condition of your batteries. We have a film rewind button and this camera allows you to rewind uh, the film in the middle of the roll which is kind of an important professional feature. And on the bottom here we have the uh, this yellow button or beige button, uh, a beige yellow button which you use to change the firing modes. And you can change it set on single right now but if I push this button it uh, switches from single to say uh, continuous high, continuous low. And then to use the self timer we have two sec settings on the bottom for two seconds and ten seconds. You would simply push this lever to show the self timer setting and then you can kind of choose by pushing the button two seconds or ten seconds. Uh, so pretty cool and interesting features. On the back of the camera here we have this uh, uh, shutter which closes the uh, viewfinder. So if you're doing say a precision shooting and you're not by the camera looking through it and blocking off the light coming through the rear of the finder, it's possible that some of this stray light can find its way toward the light meter on the inside and affect the exposure. So by closing this when your eye is not near the finder uh, that gives you more ex uh, accurate metering. Uh, on the sides here we also have these buttons here. We have the AE lock button similar to the uh, 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 program or you know the program by using the shutter button on the front and we have the uh, buttons here for uh, black or white allowing you to shoot to black objects with black backgrounds or uh, light objects with white backgrounds uh, similar to what as I previously mentioned on the Olympus OM4 and OM3 series. On the bottom here we have a, 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 sec a selection of switches here and uh, we have the on off button, we have the ISO button and we have the exposure compensation button. If you're pushing these buttons and using the dial on the top you can set the film speed and you can also adjust for the exposure compensation. Uh, on the bottom here we have nothing but a tripod socket and we have the switch here, uh, the lever for removing the battery pack. 
And I have this camera loaded with these uh, lithium ion batteries, which uh, we, you know, I like here in Japan. I can use them over and over again. I've been using this set of batteries for six or seven years now. Works really well. Uh, make sure that when you're not using these cameras to uh, uh, not leave the batteries loaded inside because regardless of what kind of battery you have in there, the gassing from the batteries has a chemical reaction with uh, the plating on the contacts and causes it to corrode and can cause the... Uh, 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 the camera or battery is not to get a good connection and the camera won't work. We have an accessory socket here for plugging in a, a remote switch. And of course we have the shutter button on the front. And on the other front of the camera we have uh, the stop down meter here so you can stop down the lens, uh, the aperture on the lens, and you can use the other functions here for metering through a stop down lens. So say you're using something may, maybe like an FL or whatever kind of oddball lens, or you have one of these uh, lenses which doesn't have the uh, uh, automatic index uh, system that uh, uh, would work with uh, the FD style cameras. Uh, this allows you to use those. We have, uh, I guess, a focus assistance, uh, focus assist IR beam kind of thing here on the front. Oh wait, there's nothing like that. I'm trying. To, I'm here. I'm thinking of something like the Konica you know, modern cameras. This is probably just the. If I would imagine, maybe I should check at the countdown light for the self timer. We have a bayonet mount lens on these cameras and bayonet mount in this kind of style has a collar which you you line up the red dot you have to turn this all the way to the left and line up the red dot with the dot on the top and then you once the lens is on you turn it all the way to the right to lock it sometimes these can get stuck on the cameras if the lens has been on the camera for two or three decades sometimes four decades i sometimes find cameras like this maybe five decades now we're getting close to that uh, but simply, if, you know, you twist it like crazy and eventually it will come off. Uh, this camera I have fitted here. I'm not loading it right. Got to put that all the way to the, to the side. This camera is, has one of the early FD mount lenses, what we call the chrome nose, chrome nose lens. It will also work with the later SSC style lenses and also the new FD lenses. There were different variations in the FD models. The earliest ones you can always spot by this uh, chrome ring around the front. And I was wondering why the chrome ring because I kind of, you know, I, I worry about like reflections off of the, the sun like shining onto the glass and causing, I don't know, artifacts or something, whatever you want to call them on the film. Uh, I guess there was enough concern among shooters that Canon got rid of the chrome nose design and then replaced it with a black one. There's a bayonet attachment on the front here for attaching Canon's lens hoods. And they also made a, a macro accessories and things which could be used to turn the lens around or attach the front of the lens. On the back of these lenses we have the typical aperture settings and for certain cameras uh, uh, when using like the AE finders or something like that, you have to switch it to the uh, automatic, which is the, the green little ring here. For this camera, for most use, I just simply use the uh, uh, normal aperture settings. When I'm shooting with these cameras, some people prefer the, say, the uh, shutter priority, aper you know, a shutter priority automatic operation. Uh, for when I'm shooting one of these cameras, I prefer the aperture priority automatic operation, so I can simply turn the aperture and not have to kind of wiggle my way through the manual shutter speeds you know turning the dial here i find that that works better for me and as i said i like the program mode here uh, being able and perhaps using the either center weighted or spot metering a system for you know, giving me the best exposures anyway uh it's kind of my uh, my long-winded review of the canon t90 uh oh i forgot to talk about loading the film so Simply pop open the door like so. This is going to be one of the easiest cameras in the world to load film into. Uh, drop your film canister here, feed in your film, close the door, and the camera will pre-wind the film and get you all the way up to number one. You don't have to do anything. But, but, uh, easy pleasy. And as I said, the camera has automatic rewind. It will rewind the film when you reach the end of the roll or if you want to change films for whatever reason. You expose the film. You don't have to go all the way through the uh, roll before you get rid of it. Uh, you have the capability to rewind it right here. Anyway, uh, that's it for my video about the Canon T90 FD mount manual focus SLR film camera. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them in the section below. Uh, if you want to see more videos, uh, please subscribe. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you tune in again soon.